Speaking as a, an old brain scientist, uh, most neurophysiologists, neuroscientists are materialists. They believe that what we perceive to be consciousness is purely the product of the human brain. Uh, what is your view on the nature of consciousness? Is it something fundamental in the universe? Is it something fundamental to human beings? Or is it purely something that uh, is derived from the physical world? Well, if, it's, if you're a thoroughgoing materialist, I'm not a materialist, but if you are, and you say that, con that uh, the material stuff of, or the material activity of the brain can be conscious, you've still got to explain how matter can be conscious. There are some materialist philosophers, particularly Galen Strawson, who is a, he's a British philosopher, uh, who's recently come out as a materialist saying materialism implies panpsychism, because if matter can be conscious in the brain, unless consciousness mysteriously appears from nowhere in human brains or somewhere else, all matter has the potential for consciousness. So he would argue a thoroughgoing materialism would imply consciousness throughout all nature. And why not? I think he makes a very good case for it. And um, um, I think that um, the con conventional view that the whole of nature is totally unconscious, that somehow when brains reach a certain size, a kind of light bulb of consciousness goes on, and it doesn't do anything anyway, even when it's gone on. I, per I personally find that a fantastical point of view. It's very unconvincing, and even materialists don't seem to believe it very thoroughly once they leave their laboratories. Um, it's very difficult to lead life as a thoroughgoing materialist. That you are nothing but the activity of your brain, and that's all caused by physical causes. You don't really have any free will, just an illusion of it. Our whole legal system is based on the assumption people do have free will. It's, I think it's a bizarre philosophy, and um, although it's common within neurophysiology labs, um, it's very hard to defend in, in philosophical terms, in my opinion. So what then is consciousness, based on your understanding of the nature of reality and how reality is structured? I think we have to ask what does consciousness do, and I think consciousness is involved in choice and the um, weighing up of possibilities. Consciousness inhabits the realm of possibility. It's different from actuality. And also, consciousness is not, of course, all there is to the mind. Most of your activities and most of sure. mine are unconscious. They're habitual. The vast majority of what we do is unconscious habit. So consciousness is concerned only with a tiny part of our psychic life. And it's largely concerned with making choices. It's largely concerned with considering alternative possibilities. And what consciousness does is enables different possibilities to be held together and chosen among. Um, now, I think to any system in nature which has possibilities, which are not fixed, um, would have some measure of consciousness. And what quantum physics tells us is that every system in nature uh, is not rigidly determinate. It has possibilities. Even a hydrogen atom, an electron, has a whole realm of possibility open to it, of which only a small fraction is realized. Now, to what extent it's making real choices, to what extent there's consciousness in something as simple as an electron is arguable and probably yeah. undecidable. Um, I think it gets much more interesting when we look at larger systems like the sun or the galaxy. Um, if consciousness emerges from patterns of electrical activity in your brain and mine, as most materialists would assume, uh, the sun has vastly more complex patterns of electrical activity than our brains. So why shouldn't that be associated with consciousness? Why shouldn't the sun have a mind? And if the sun has a mind, why not the, all the stars? Uh, if all the stars have minds, what about a huge collection of stars like the galaxy linked up by vast plasma uh, currents of electricity surging through the arms of galaxies, linking together all the parts of it? So, so you're building a, a, a hierarchy of different kinds of consciousness, each one truly conscious, not, not metaphor, but real? Real, but with its own kind of consciousness. Um, I mean, human consciousness is different from dog consciousness, and, you know, Chinese consciousness is different from American consciousness. And sun consciousness is different than earth consciousness. Oh, totally different, yes. Okay. So, and we, we, it's hard for us to imagine other forms of consciousness. Um, you know, it's even hard to understand other people who speak the same language sometimes. Um, so, 
um, our ability to understand these things may be limited, but to say that they don't exist is, is an even greater limitation. No? What does that do to the concept of consciousness, assuming what you're saying is even a tiny bit true? Does it make consciousness something fundamental to reality as opposed to the physical reality? Well, the thing is, I, I wouldn't say as opposed to. I would say that our consciousness and our physical reality go hand in hand. You, what I do and what you do and what I say and what you say depends on our consciousness and on our bodies, our ability to move and breathe and speak and so forth. You can't have one without the other. You can't have one without the other. So, so if there's no body, there's no consciousness. Well, um, probably not. But, um, you know, the, the, that still means there's plenty of... Um, I mean, I wouldn't like to discuss the question of life after death. I mean, that's a, a separate discussion. But if we take this larger view of consciousness, if the sun has consciousness, if the galaxy yes. has consciousness, what about the entire universe? Maybe the entire universe has a mind. Why not? Um, the, um, there may be many, many levels of consciousness, and even atoms and molecules may have limited forms. So you like have a nesting of consciousness. A nesting of consciousness. And nature's nested in its organization. I mean, my body, like yours, contains organs, yes. you know, the heart, the lungs, and, and so forth. Cells. Those contain tissues, those contain cells, those contain molecules, those contain atoms. Nature is nested in its structure. And then the sort of collective minds, you know, the whole national consciousness or, you know, or a larger group, group consciousness and, and so forth. Paradigms within science, the consciousness of a whole community, a way of thinking, a habit of thinking. So all of these, I think, are nested levels of consciousness. And there's no reason why it should all be confined just to human brains. Uh, I think that's an extraordinarily limited and constricting view. Well, when we have human consciousness or animal consciousness, we can connect it to a brain. I mean, that, that we know how, it, how the connection works. How would the connection work in any of the examples you've given? Well, we don't actually know how it can be connected to a brain. That's why philosophical journals are absolutely full of papers by philosophers arguing about how consciousness works and how it relates to brain activity. Um, if, if the connection uh, is through the electrical patterns of activity in our brain, um, I think that's a pretty good candidate for an interface. Um, then the sun has very complex electrical patterns. Galaxies have complex electrical patterns of currents flowing through plasma over billions of miles, and huge currents and rhythmic patterns of activity. Um, electrons and cells have electrical patterns of activity. Everything, in fact, in nature has electrical patterns of activity, molecules, cells. Um, so I think the electrical fields of organized or self-organizing systems are a very good candidate for an interface between consciousness and the physical structure. When you say interface, that means that consciousness is independent of that, but the electrical fields mediates between one and the other, as opposed to the, to the electrical fields being the consciousness. No, I don't think the fields are the consciousness. I think, as I said the, just now, the consciousness is a matter of possibility. Everything has possibilities. An electron has many possibilities. When you have uh, an electron going through a double slit, you know, there's the possibility of all those different ways of it moving. And in quantum physics, they can predict what photons or electrons will do only by taking into account all the possible things they could do. And of those, they do just one, and you get a probability. Now, that probability structure is not separate from the physical reality of the right. electron. The physical reality is, at any moment, um, opens up into the future through a range of possibilities. I think all things that have consciousness are in the same state. They have a physical reality, like a brain, a body, the sun, its electrical fields, and its whole, its whole nature, its whole physical body with its rhythmic patterns. Those always relate to future possibilities that are closely coupled to the system in the present. And it's those future possibilities which are the realm in which consciousness operates. So it's not like a mysterious entity that somehow comes in and is sort of dualistically welded on for a while to a body. And then it's a realm of possibility that, like a cloud of possibility in the future, that surrounds every physical thing according to quantum physics and according to science as we know it. Is there any evidence at all that you could point to for the 
kind of consciousness that things other than biological entities would have? Well, it's, we can only know consciousness by analogy. That's the trouble. I mean, I can't even prove that you're conscious. I can assume you are by analogy with myself, and it makes sense to think of you as conscious or to think of, uh, I mean, to think of dogs as having minds. Most people who keep dogs take it for granted. They have feelings, emotions, and they can think, and not necessarily in the same way we do. Um, but this way of thinking about minds... Um, which are generally purposive, what the philosopher Daniel Dennett calls it the intentional stance, that to think about things with minds as having purposes, goals, in other words, having future directions, um, is a, a good way of thinking about things. Um, in fact, it's almost inevitable we see things in that way. Now, to prove that things really have minds, to prove that a dog has a mind, to prove that the sun has a mind, it's hard to see how you could do that, uh, because it's hard to see how you can prove a person has a mind, and that's why philosophers have argued about this for centuries. There are even philosophers today who say the mind doesn't exist, it's an illusion, the only thing that's real is the brain. Sure, sure, but we have at least uh, our sense of behaviors and activities, and we can make analogies, certainly with animals, with dogs, it's very easy. Yes. But with inanimate objects, there seems to be a fairly uh, sharp break. Well, it's often said that primitive people project animistically yes. purposes onto nature. They see, for example, the earth as having purposes. You know, Mother Nature has purposes. Um, and this is regarded as some childish illusion, uh, whereas sort of smart people know that's all not true. I'm not sure that smart people are really being so smart when it comes to things like that. Even eminent scientists like James Lovelock think that the earth has a kind of reality, a life of her own. In his book, The Revenge of Gaia, he talks about how you know, the Earth can actually affect us. 